The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. We're on the third and final part of the DIY Novena laptop build. Ben, would you like to go over what you and Felix have done so far? Sure. In part one, we put the Novena together and installed Linux. In part two, we created a custom keyboard peripheral for it with all hand-wired LEDs, which Felix did, which was pretty awesome. So what do we have in store for us in part three? Well, we're gonna take that keyboard as our base and start designing everything around it because it's the largest component. We'll start with the LCD, come up with a custom enclosure for that, figure out what's gonna be below the keyboard, such as the battery and the hard drive, get that all designed, and then use the laser cutter, CNC machine, and 3D printer to create all the parts we need, and then we can do final assembly and wiring. Sounds like you have some interesting design work ahead of you. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. How can we make this portable? Inspired designs. I am the internet troll. Regrettable acting. Bend them hatches! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So one thing we haven't really talked about that much in this project is designing the actual enclosure for the Novena. So I'm gonna talk about that now. We already made the keyboard enclosure, but I'll show you what my thought process was for it. We have this shape here. This represents the PCB that was at the base of the custom keyboard. And we're gonna start with this. And from around that, we needed to measure the metal frame around it, which was a little bigger. You can see it here. And the metal frame also had squared off corners, kind of like a book in Battlestar Galactica. So when I did the drawing for that, I wanted to make sure that they were the right comparison to each other. So the inner square represents the PCB and the outer, well, I guess it's a rectangle, not a square, and the outer shape represents the frame. So I measured all four sides of it. So instead of saying, okay, you know, here's the size of the metal frame, here's the size of the PCB, I'm just gonna put them over each other. I actually just measured the PCB, then I measure how much bigger the metal frame is from it. And I do this because A, it may not be perfectly centered, and B, it's just more accurate that way. If you just take a really good measurement of one thing, and then if something else is slightly bigger, just take a measurement of the difference, and you'll have a much better reference because instead of measuring something this big, you're just measuring something that much different. The next thing I had to do was figure out where the rare earth magnets were going to go. I wanted to make one 3D printed piece that would work for all four of them. So I made sure all the magnets were the same distance from the edge of the case. Next, I had to create an offset around the metal frame itself that it would sit in. If I'm gonna use a uh, size four screw, the head on that is about 0.225. So I made the offset about 0.25 inches wider than the frame itself. And that way we know there's not only room for the shaft of the screw where the threads are, but there's also room for the head of the screw because it's quite possible or very possible that the diameter of the screwdriver will be greater than that of the head of the screw and you might not be able to get at it. Be like, oh, it won't fit. Ah, it's always annoying when you come across a device like that, so I try to avoid it. Okay, so I drew in the screws, and this shape here represents the actual outer perimeter of the keyboard module. I also made sure that there were some feet at the bottom, and this is one of those cases where I had to actually kind of design a head. I had to figure out at least basically where the Novena and the hard drive and the battery were going to be to make sure that when the keyboard's in place, the feet that allow the keyboard when pulled out of the unit to sit at a slight angle, like a keyboard normally does. I wanted to make sure those feet wouldn't actually intersect with anything once the unit was put together. So yeah, sometimes you have to think three or four steps ahead before you can you know, complete what you're working on at the moment. Next, I drew a thickness representation of everything. This is the PCB here. This is the spacer that holds the magnet inside of the PCB. This is the magnet that will be built into the case that will connect with it. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. This is the metal frame. So we have a half inch piece of cincher here and it has multiple depths cut to it to fit everything that's inside of the keyboard. And on top, we have an additional layer. You can see it right here. And this will be acrylic or something. And that actually bolts over the metal plate. And that's what keeps the keyboard in place. 
And then at the base of the keyboard, we're gonna have these holes and these allow the magnets that'll be built into the main case of the unit to fit up through the holes and get as close as possible to the rare earth magnets that are trapped inside the PCB, allowing the keyboard to connect to the main unit. We also need to have a certain amount of space around the edges of the PCB so that the wires from Felix's lighting can make their way to the bottom of the board. Okay, finally, I need to make the bottom central layer, which is layer one, as well as the aluminum base. The reason I'm not making the whole thing out of plastic is because, well, aluminum is stronger. So, you know, that's what we need. The aluminum base will have all of these connection screw holes through it. Plus, it'll have mounting holes for the Novena itself. Basically, any hole I could find for a screw mount on the Novena, I'm going to map to the bottom aluminum plate, even if I don't use them all. There'll also be holes for the component box mount and vents just for, you know, more random airflow. Then we have some spaces over here so we can actually set the battery in and know exactly where it's going to go in the unit. That'll also help keep it more stable. All right, so just a quick overview of the case. We have the LCD top layer. This is our sandwich view of everything in between it. Here's the bottom layer with the custom keyboard as its own module that mounts on these magnetic holder things, which are built into a base. There's a bottom speaker portion here, which is detachable. Our power button up here, the hinges fit in here. And when everything's said and done, we'll also make a uh, laser cut rear plate to make the back of it look nice for all, where all the ports are. Okay, we have a aluminum base for the Novena unit. This will give it a nice solid structure for everything to be built on. On top of that goes our first layer. This gives us the first amount of height. Then we have this secondary keyboard layer and it has the magnetic catches on it. In the back, we'll have a laser cut panel. I haven't built that yet. This is our sound bar, which is removable. That will fit right here via magnets. This top bar is what the screen attaches to and has the power button. And the keyboard goes in this big opening here. Okay, so as usual, I'm gonna glue it and screw it together. Here we go. I'm just gonna make sure everything fits before I glue or screw anything else. Let's put the sound bar in place. Good, here, put this. Actually, this goes like this, this, and well, it should fit, in theory. So everything is magnetized. All right, nice and shiny. I need to think about the screw lengths here. Let's remove this for a second. So this piece, I think I will use longer screws to the back of the unit so they'll actually go all the way through both these layers and into this top bar, adding strength and stability, which are the same things. I'm gonna test fit a few things before I go any further. Fan goes here, and that's one of the reasons I put feet on the bottom, so there's a gap. It'll pull the air in and then blow it across the SOC. Novena itself fits here. There are screw patterns for it. Okay, looks like they're pretty good and they're not completely perfect because I actually drew them manually without using the step file. The fan gets pushed back a little bit. You probably can't see it on camera, but it's about an eighth inch back off the hole. Probably the best thing to do is to actually just saw off or grind off the end of the metal of the fan here, which allows to push it forward and make it nice and flush. The battery, I actually had to increase the thickness of the case to make this fit, but it should go right here. There we go, nice. Hard disk or solid state or whatever you want to call it. That goes here under the expansion header. Cool. We'll probably string these antennas up someplace once we get everything put together. There's a back panel for this. I haven't cut it yet, but I made a paper pattern just to test. Test it with the cheap paper before making the expensive part. Looks like it'll work. And the screen goes here, of course. Okay, everything feels pretty solid. We'll probably have to cut down the length of this power cord. That's not a big deal. Remove this so it just fits for the time being. Once Felix comes back from the hardware store with the longer screws, we'll get this attached and then the screen.
Felix, there isn't an internal USB header on this thing. Well, Ben, there is an internal USB header, but it is on this... Flat fl flex cable? Yes, and that's, uh. that's designed to go out to a front panel connector, which we don't have. Okay, but we can get USB off of it? Right. So you have the schematics right here. Mm -hmm. It looks like uh, the mouse and keyboard are ported out to that. Okay, USB mouse, USB keyboard. So these chips on the top here, this must be some sort of USB hub or controller chip. Yep. Um, this is the schematic for mm -hmm. it? Or the pin out of it, yes, I should say. Yes, the pin out. So it looks like DP3 and DM3 are going or intended for the USB mouse. So we know where those are on this chip. The question is, how do we make a connection? Well, I mean, we could desolder the flat flex connector. It would never jump again, but that would probably be a pretty decent way to get a connection. Otherwise, we could try to connect directly to the chip. You can see here, see those small pairs of wires? Yes. Those are clearly USB lines, but those are too small to connect to and we wouldn't get a very good connection. But I might be able to solder to the chip itself. All right, I'm going to uh, attempt to solder wires to the chip manually, since that is probably the easiest way to get the signals we need. Ports, ports everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Ethan Hunt is deep undercover as a geisha. So if you need to do intricate work like this, make sure you're using the finest tip that you have. Keep it clean. I like to put a little flux on it. Ah, uh, yeah and only hit the edge of things. So try to pre-tin everything, and then really just kind of use the iron to uh, heat them up. Oh, looks like I got too much on there. Oh no, I fixed it until it was broken. Well, they're in the right place, but there's too much solder. So what I'm gonna do is put a little hot glue just on the wire to hold it in place. So even if the solder bond breaks, the wire won't move. I really need to get my <laughs> big magnifying lamp wired up. So I'm gonna use some solder wick and just try to remove what we don't need while preserving the position. Almost there. So a little bit of bridging. So once I think I have the connection, I'm gonna try to move it with my tweezers to make sure it's actually solid. Okay, I've manually hooked up the keyboard negative and positive USB lines to the chip. And now I'm going to attach them to this USB port. I'm just gonna glue it here at an angle. That way it'll be pretty solid. Hopefully I get the wiring right. So in the USB we have five volts ground and then the two inner pins are the differential signals. The negative one is next to the five volts and the positive one is next to the ground. You know, USB cables might be the best thing that ever happened to computing. I mean, think about it, they're so cool. Now we can start final assembly. Felix, Great. it looks like you added a power button here. Yep. All right, cool. A little connector here so we could disconnect everything if we needed to. Oh yeah, so it's like, woo, it's completely separate. Good idea. I see you added a strain relief here. Mm-hmm. And then we have the speakers hooked up here. So there is an amplifier built into this, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was a little surprised to learn that, but hey, that's cool. One might say it's the duck's guts. All right, let's put that there. Let's bring this to the edge of the table so we can screw it. All right, you wanna hold the screen and I'll drive the drill? Yeah. Got the keyboard strain relief in place. Let's plug it into the keyboard. Oh, actually, let's do one thing. Let's make sure that the LCD cable doesn't hit the SOC. I mean, I don't think it's gonna get hot enough to melt plastic, but mm -hmm. it definitely gets warm. So just to be safe. That's pretty much it, isn't it, right? Because these are just magnetically yeah. attached. Yeah. So I was ready to boot up. Let's see. I flash the board. I got it to charge. I'm a little worried about those wires there. Mm -hmm. You can always tweak that later though. Try the almighty power button that we recycled. There he is. You hear the speakers click. Voila. It's booting. All on its own. Well, Karen, we finally finished it. The Novena Hacker Laptop. Ooh, so many shiny blue lights. Yeah, Felix has been wanting to build this for quite a while, so it's finally done. Are you happy with it? Very much so. All right, is it everything you dreamed it would be? Pretty much, yeah. All right. Okay, so we had a lot of viewer questions in parts one and two of this build, asking 
Why would you bother going and building your own laptop, especially considering the costs of the Novena parts, when you could just go and buy your own laptop at the store pre-built? So what are the benefits of doing this DIY? Well, the Novena hardware has a lot of I.O., more than a standard laptop does. Remember, they make a MacBook now with a single USB 3.0 port on it. Yeah, that's frustrating. Yeah, that's very I mean, frustrating. obviously they, they take that stuff out of modern stuff because connectors take up a lot of room, but this mm -hmm. is connector heaven. Mm -hmm. Not only do you have an abnormal amount of headers in the back, but you've got stuff on the inside too, like this connects to the FPGA. So with something like this, you could hook this up directly to other peripherals and devices, like kind of like a Raspberry Pi. You can get low level access if you normally can't with a standard laptop. And we made a compartment for the components, a component Ooh. compartment. So this ended up with only one secret hacker compartment? Yeah, well, we didn't have a whole lot of room here. See, the keyboard goes right mm -hmm. to this and, but you know, the modular keyboard, which was Felix's, you know, dream keyboard, this was probably about half the build by itself. I mean, we made it as his own module here. You can hold it if you want. Totally worth it. Mm-hmm. It's a, yeah, it is a little big, but, but and it's it, so cool. it, yeah, it's awesome. But it 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 took up quite a bit of space. Do you wish you would have had <laughs> more room for the like the secondary? Yeah, I would have liked numerical to, port, uh, keyboard. No, well, I would have liked to put in a, a trackpad of some sort. Oh yeah, but we didn't oh, yeah. really have room because we put this pretty much up as far as it could go. Mm -hmm. Because you always want to put keys farther up in a keyboard because that's where your fingers go, not down here. Mm -hmm. So the room down here was fairly limited. So we just made it a compartment and the speaker bar. It's magnetic, you can remove it. But as far as a full track pad, we could have taken one off a laptop, but we didn't have enough room. So we wanted to make it hacker friendly. So it, again, you might ask why you would do this. Well, this is a cool laptop. That's not like that stuff you get at the store. A lot of people, they want to open stuff up and feel like they have control of it, like ownership of how it works. and. This embodies that spirit. And it was very fun to put together. So we're done with the Novena Hacker Laptop. Yeah, we've been working on the plans for this for about six months now. I know Felix is really excited, so I'm glad to see it come together. Well, to give our viewers an idea of how long it took you to build this laptop, about how many hours do you think it took you and Felix to assemble this? Eh, probably about 60 to 70 combined. Of course, we spread that out over you know three different weeks. A lot of times we work on things, you know, at night or on the mm -hmm. weekends. You don't always see them in the show, but not too ridiculous. I would say yeah. it was still better than that Dreamcast thing we made last year. Well, yeah, and 60 to 70 hours for a project this complex really isn't that bad, but it's always nice to have an idea of how long a project would take to build if you decide to do your own. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times I forget. By a lot of times, I mean all the time to, like, get the stopwatch and figure out how long it takes. Yeah. It's really hard to deduce that sometimes, but, uh, yeah, I would say something like this, it can be done at a reasonable amount of time. It's pretty good. So is there anything you would have done differently other than adding the trackpad? No, I think it's pretty much the way I wanted. I like the fact that we made it all shiny gloss black. I mean, a lot of times the things we design in the show are dictated by the materials we have on hand. We keep a lot of things in stock, but not everything. So mm -hmm. it's like, do we have enough black acrylic of a certain thickness <laughs> to do the entire thing? And this time we did. Well, and I like that you guys added a few bits of flair in there, like with Felix adding all the LEDs under each individual key and the yeah. fact that the logo lights up and yeah, it's just some like, nice little extras. Stuff like that's easy to do and the laser cutter makes it super simple. Yeah. Overall, I think it turned out pretty good. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. Yeah. All right. Well, if you have any questions for Ben or Felix about their DIY Novena laptop, let us know in the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. Where you can also read about our other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. La 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 la. I am the architect of all your pain. Now forget it. Oh, thanks. I mean, here I thought you were gonna do something mean to me because you're the villain. You know, if they're gonna bring in you back, I think it should be the emperor as a ghost. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.